So, May, you're taking part in the Festival of Ambitious Ideas on the 23rd of August, and the theme is Lessons from the Future. What do you think that the changes in technology are going to mean for um, treating mental illness and um, helping people who have mental health issues? I think it's going to really open the doors for them. Um, new developments is made on this on a daily basis and we're understanding new of it more and more. A lot of people up to now have not been able to experience the changes that can be made, especially like children with ADHD, where they have to imagine things, they have to um, pretend to be something and their minds can't be still. And all of a sudden you put them in a virtual reality world where they can see. For an ADHD child, you don't have to say anymore, imagine, you can say, look, um, we can take people to places we could never take them before without moving out of our own houses. We can, um, we can monitor them in real time of where they are. With, with weight loss, for the first time, I can take somebody who is completely overweight and take their face and put it in a body, on a body that they want to have, and show them that body and say, right, take your new body for a spin, go walk around with it. And all of a sudden, what's, remember what I said to you, what your, what your subconscious mind sees, it believes. There's no difference for it between um, fiction and reality. It's the same thing. So now I've seen myself with this body. It's real. It's achievable. And that subconscious mind will do whatever it can to get to that reality because that's what you want. That's what it wants. So it just opens such a big spectrum. It, it, we found that people with dementia, when they put virtual reality on them, they actually improve. And now you can go take people that's in a in an old age home that can never go anywhere and you say, let's go dive the Great Barrier Reef. I had ladies, old ladies, that for the first time I can put them outside of skyscraper and say, look at that. And they said, oh, I could never do this before. The possibilities are so endless for them. Um, we can teach so much better with it. We can do so much better with it. People can now all of a sudden learn how to save a baby's life. How many of us are going to have a nurse to save a baby's life in virtual reality? Because when your subconscious mind experiences it for the first time, it's actually experience for it. It tells an experience. So next time it does it, it's not that strange. I work with clients that have to go for job interviews, and it's for them scary. So what we can do is we work beforehand on the job interview, and then on virtual reality they have the job interview. And they do all this, and when they go into the actual job interview, I've done this. I can do this. I know I can do this. So the world just becomes so many more possibilities for people. So does that apply, I mean, we, we've looked at mental health issues on one hand, but does that work for things like um, fear of public speaking and, and other skills that you yeah. might want to develop? Yes, yeah, so we've got fear of public speaking as one that we use, where, again, people need to speak in office meetings, they need to speak in crowds, and it freaks them out. So we can, again, work with them and then experience talking across, so how the virtual reality works, you hear the people, you see the people, and you actually have to give the speech, whatever it might be, and you can hear your own voice and how it sounds. Um, we've got one which a fear of MRI. There's a lot of people that have to go for an MRI. Now you can't say, I don't want to go for an MRI, I'm too scared. But it's frightening for people, and how it works, it works through the whole process, the before waiting and the waiting room, because we've all found that the waiting room part is almost scarier than the actual thing. So it takes you through that and then through the MRI with all the noise that you've go for the MRI. And we found that if patients can just experience it once, it's not that overwhelming. Also we've got one of fear of needles where people have, we all get injections or have blood taken and so many people are scared of needles, which is an illogical fear, it's just this tiny little thing. But when they experience it and we work through it, People get hurt when they're scared of needles. We've got needles being broken off in people's arms. And now all of a sudden, you know what, we can actually do it. Kids that have to go for immunization, it's not this hold the child down, we have to inject him. He's actually been through all this and he can actually do it. So do you think this has implications for making, um, you know, sort of mental health care much more affordable and accessible and, and really a shorter time frame in terms of treatment? I definitely do. I mean, as I said to you, the... the um, the research on it is coming up thick and fast um, on it. 
just something like PTSD, where the uh, um, def American Defense Forces has put a lot of money in it to work on their soldiers with PTSD, with soldiers before they couldn't help and all of a sudden they can. Um, now that technology is becoming cheaper and cheaper. I mean, virtual reality a few years ago was just a pipe dream for most of us to have it in our houses. Most people can now actually go and get an Oculus Rift or whatever you is that you want and get it in your house. Now I'm not saying you can start doing your own mental health in your house, but you can start thinking like mindfulness and there's some meditation things that you can start working. Plus it makes so many more people um, in, in the rural area can now actually have affordable um, bleeding edge technology to be available to the, the rural community through virtual reality. We currently we have a problem with all the high tech technology and medical services is just in the big cities. Mate, thanks very much for your time.